think uh, more than technology, it's green urbanism and how buildings live in the city and um, that they make a good neighbor. Uh, buildings have to be kind of um, physical citizens in the world. Uh, so it's not uh, important just how the building itself performs, but how the spaces around the building performs. Uh, because buildings oftentimes they create urbanism or they have a life outside of themselves. Um, so. Um, um, for us, it's, it's uh, extremely important to treat not only the interior and the technology of the building, but the surrounding of the building itself. I think it's, it's at its core, it, it, I think it's the most fundamental aspect from the beginning of each design, is when you're considering the orientation of a building, when you're considering materials, when you're considering uh, just the size and, and, and its footprint. Uh, all of those things are actually informed by sustainability. Um, how it works with its site and how it works with its environment, uh, orientation towards the sun, how it could take advantage of the winds, etc. Uh, all of those things, even if they're not explicitly uh, informing the design of a building, they are inherently part of our sensibility. Um, because, it, I mean, that, that's true architecture is when you are actually considering these things that even if they're not categorized specifically as being sustainable or green, it is about sustainability and being green ultimately because that's what good design is. It's not necessarily an added layer, um, but it's really at its core. Places like Singapore, which are historic cities, uh, one needs to be extremely delicate about new architecture, which means not, for us, new architecture doesn't mean a superficial reference to historic style. It's not a stylistic issue, it's, it's how the new and the old live together in a seamless way, how they will complement each other and bring a kind of a new life. Uh, we often say, um, there's always room for contemporary work within historic fabrics uh, and that they don't have to be in tension but they can actually complement one another. And in the cases where we've had opportunities to work within a historic structure, um, the new structure actually makes the old structure more beautiful. It actually uh, gives you a new perspective on that history. Um, it kind of creates a new image or a kind of a, it's a it's a way of uh, rejuvenating um, the historic fabric. So I think it's, it's finding that balance of, of doing new work, uh, contemporary work, forward thinking, uh, but one that is also rooted, uh, rooted in history, rooted in the timeless aspects of design, uh, which is what makes old cities so, um, so amazing. I think awareness. Um, I think it's awareness of what is new and um, also awareness of what has been done, awareness of what is already here. Uh, I think um, a lot of times when um, we become so comfortable with our own environment, we tend to perhaps not notice uh, some of the characteristics that, uh, that have been very successful over time. So I think it, it makes people um, aware that the, the issues are not new, they're timeless issues, but at the same time the issues have to be uh, foregrounded and, and the issues have to be something more than just an abstraction that you're going for a kind of a, a title, you're going for some kind of branding, but uh, that it's at the core of how we think about our built environment. So. It brings a level of reality to topics that could otherwise uh, seem relatively abstract. The idea of what is a green building, um, I think, or a green city. Um, there's so many different factors that go into it, and, and looking green may not even be in the top ten.